Well, hello and welcome to our live webinar to talk all about Ipswich School. Um, just to let you know, you can send through any questions um, in the comments section if you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook. Um, please do note that YouTube only takes comments for those of you with Google accounts, um, but you can also email admissions at um, or text the number that I will shortly show on screen um, and we'll pick up all of these comments. So do send through any questions that you have. We're already receiving some through, so thank you very much. Um, the session will be recorded and we will have it available to view afterwards on our YouTube channel um, and Facebook page. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to the headmaster, Nicholas Weaver, to tell you all about Ipswich School. Well, thank you, Saskia. And hello, everybody. And good morning and welcome to Ipswich School virtually. I'm delighted that you can join us for this virtual open morning. Uh, my name is Nicholas Weaver and I am very proud to be the headmaster of Ipswich School. And I hope you'll see why after your experiences this morning, watching this webinar, going onto our website, uh, seeing our videos and having a look round, you'll see why I get so excited by the start of any school year and welcoming the school back from a summer holiday. But this year, more than most, after lockdown, it's been such a delight to have the pupils back in school, even with all of our safety precautions, just to be back in the business of an Ipswich School education for all of those pupils. I want to share more of that with you this morning. I hope you will uh, have a good look at our website. There are lots of videos there and a virtual reality tour of the site. But there are some other important people for you to see this morning, and I'm going to introduce them now. They are, first of all, our heads of section. So these are the members of my senior management team who are in charge of different parts of the school. So first of all, let me introduce Anna Caston. Anna. Good morning, everybody. Hello, um, I'm Anna Caston. I'm a head of lower school, which is years seven and eight, um, which I think is the best job in the school. Good morning. Okay. And then we have uh, Andrew Bradshaw. Andrew. Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Bradshaw. Um, I'm head of middle school, so that's years 9, 10 and 11. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. And then to Ben Cliff. Morning, everyone. Old claim from Anna there. Uh, my name is Ben Cliff. I am uh, head of years 12 and 13, which you'll know as the sixth form. Brilliant. So those are our heads of section for the different parts of the school. And then a very important person for you to be introduced to is Laura Trainer. Laura is our admissions manager and she runs all of the admin, the tours and everything around the school. Uh, morning, Laura. Hello. So yes, uh, if you're coming for a tour or assessment or entrance test, then you are more than likely to meet with me. Yeah, thank you. And uh, of course, the most important people at the school though are our pupils. And um, although we don't have any here for you on the webinar now, you will see as you look on uh, the website, you'll see those videos. There are lots of videos where we have interviews with our pupils and you will hear from them in their own words, the experience of being at Ipswich School. But I'd just like to reiterate uh, what Saskia said earlier, that this webinar is an opportunity to um, have your questions answered. So please do put them on the chat if you're able to, or email them directly into that email address, which will be on the screen a little bit later. So um, you may be here uh, because you are looking uh, to join yourselves, your pupil, or you may be here as the parents or maybe as families looking to join one of those sections, the sixth form, uh, years 9, 10, 11, or year 7. Or perhaps you're here because you're thinking of going the whole way through the journey from the prep, our, our junior school, which we call the prep, as so many families do. Whichever stage you're looking to join, um, I'm sure that our welcome and our induction will help you feel part of this great school in no time. And this virtual open day is just the beginning of an extraordinary future, your extraordinary future. And the next step after this would be to come in person for a visit, as we've already hinted. But also, as I've, I've mentioned, do have a look around the amazing 3D Dolls House virtual reality tour on our website of the buildings, equipment, the classrooms. They are superb. But as I said before, what really makes this school special is the people. 
And I hope you get a flavor when you see those videos of the people, of the experience you'll get in the school, music, sport, activities, design, Russian, art, science. I could go on. So many things on offer. But as well as your extraordinary future, I should talk a little bit about our extraordinary history. The school is over 600 years old. We were the school uh, that Cardinal Wolsey went to and then refounded as his Cardinal's College. Uh, we're the only school therefore mentioned in the works of Shakespeare. And we had our Royal Charter renewed over 450 years ago, a great history. We've been on this site in Henley Road in Ipswich since 1852. The first girls came over 40 years ago and the school has been fully co-ed for over 20 years. Uh, and then more recently, we've opened our daycare nursery, the Lodge Day Nursery opened in 2018. And then last year, we purchased the former hospital site, Anglesey Heights. And already we have a new boarding house up and running there with state-of-the-art ensuite rooms and facilities for our six forms, and that's great. The rest of that site, we're taking time to plan carefully the development of that over the next perhaps 10 or 15 years. But I want to focus on what is at the heart of Ipswich School beyond those buildings. And we have articulated, you'll see again on our website, uh, some core values. And the first three of those are care, passion, and potential. And we took some time uh, a few years ago just to distill what is at the heart of Ipswich School. The first of those, care, is a focus on the individual. Although we're a big enough school to offer a wealth of opportunities, our personal knowledge for every individual is really important. For example, I teach every single pupil in years 10 and 11 in my own life skills lessons. Life skills is a really important part of uh, that personal development which goes through. And my course in well-being will have been taught to almost everybody in the school. And it's important for me personally to know every single pupil. But we also, under that banner of care, want pupils to develop a sense of care for each other and for the community outside school. And with some of our outreach and charitable work, that's important. The second of those values, passion. The staff at Ipswich School are wonderful and passionate people. And I'm particularly proud of them at the moment for the way that they've stepped up, first in lockdown and now back in school. All the way through our teaching staff, our sports, our musicians, all the way through to our uh, admin and caterers. The caterers, if you've seen on Twitter recently, winning an award. We have passion throughout. And in teachers, it's passion not just for our subjects, but for our pastoral care. Um, even in lockdown, we kept our pastoral structures going. We had live tutor group meetings on a daily basis. And there was lots of individual work doing, supporting our young people, but for some of whom found that that whole time very difficult. I'm really proud of that pastoral care that comes through, part of care, but also our passion for those young people. But the passion for our subjects is really important in these times of league tables and so on. Um, I often say to the staff, none of us got into this job to get people A star grades or grade nines. I got into teaching uh, because I loved my subject, physics, and I, I wanted to share that, light the fires uh, of, of excitement, enjoyment for that subject uh, with the pupils I taught. Now, along the way, plenty of people got uh, A star grades, and that is true for all of our subjects. We have an equal love of our subjects and our activities, and if we share that, then we know that people are going to be successful. Because we combine our passion with a belief in potential, our third core value, we are a growth mindset school. We believe that everybody has the potential with deliberate practice in the right way to improve in every sphere of their life. And the research shows with the concept of growth mindset that the population is roughly split about 40% of, of, of people believe that their um, success comes from their innate abilities. Um, uh, the 40% on the other side um, roughly believe that their success comes because of the hard work that they do. Um, and there's a sort of undecided group in the middle. Well, all of the research evidence suggests that actually it is the work that we do that causes our success. And we are a a school that embodies that and embraces that and we try and communicate that and make that absolutely explicit in what we do so everybody here has potential that manifests itself in many ways um, 
from our homework policy. We, we call our homework PSC. That stands for um, preparation, stretch, consolidation. We, we describe those tasks uh, for the purpose that they have. We don't ever do homework just because it's homework's turn on the on the calendar. We do it for a purpose and we share that purpose with our pupils. Similarly, lots of schools have target grades for public exams. Um, uh, we don't do that. Rather, we share with our pupils a, 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 an outline of the possible range of outcomes that people like them have. Rather than saying, the most likely for you is this grade. We say, actually, people like you who've taken this baseline test over here can have these sorts of outcomes. And there's a bar chart. And we can say, look, there's 5% of people like you could get a grade 9, 15% uh, get a grade 8, maybe 20% get a grade 7, and then so on and so on through the other grades. What did those people do to get to those different parts of the bar chart? What's the potential that you have? And what are you going to be able to do to realise that? Um, and we want, therefore, this to be a, a, an educational establishment, a school where people can feel, as we put it, safe and brave. They feel safe and secure in the environment and they feel brave in order to try and stretch and challenge themselves in the right way. So those three core values are care, potential and passion. And to those we add our final value, which is communication. Um, we talk quite a lot about the triangle. Um, I, I like thinking about the triangle, which is parents, pupil, and school. Uh, and we communicate really well around that triangle. We get aligned on that. We're all facing the same way. And then uh, we can achieve some amazing things uh, in the education we provide. And that triangle goes down to the communication we have about clashes. We're a busy school. Um, we have lots of uh, activities which perhaps clash with, with each other and therefore people have uh, perhaps conflicting demands on them and we are excellent at resolving those and helping people um, with more help as they're younger to resolve those clashes and then gradually handing over that responsibility so that as they leave school uh, they are adept at managing their own lives. We want all of our, our um, leavers to be those people for whom the adage is right, if you want something done, you give it to a busy person because they know how to, how to get things done. And our pupils are absolutely the embodiment of that. So I hope those core values all add up to provide an education which is second to none. It's an education which comes at a cost, but it's not millions. And support is available for families in need. Uh, and there is lots written uh, in the newspapers about independent schools, but I would like to say that I defend the right of every parent to choose how they spend their money on the welfare, happiness and success of their children. I'm proud of the support that we give through our bursary fund, Founding Futures. I'm wearing my Founding Futures badge here about our bursary fund to enable pupils to come here who couldn't afford the Nipswich education. And that education is judged as excellent in our last full inspection, excellent, the top grade in every single category. Uh, since then, we've had another inspection, just a, a regular routine compliance inspection. And I mention it here because the inspector, the chief inspector, um, uh, shared something with me. And he said, it's really unusual when I interview uh, pupils. I always ask them, why would you recommend Ipswich School to a friend moving into the area? And he said it's quite unusual to get a different number, a uh, different um, answer from each pupil. Uh, and he did from ours. So he had four pupils. And the first one said, um, it's the teaching. The second one, it's the support you have if you have problems. The third one, it's the family atmosphere. And the fourth one said, it's the sense of belonging to a really special organisation. And that organisation is one, as I said before, which is big enough to op offer a lot of opportunity, a breadth of experience. And we call that the co-curriculum, co-curricula, not extra, because we believe that everybody in a rounded education should have experiences beyond their academic subjects. So that's sport, music and other things, as well as academics. If we get that education right, the results will look after themselves. The reverse isn't necessarily true. If you're interested in our results, we have three years worth of them uh, as an average on our website and the, the current years there. And, and those uh, results have put us 
at the forefront in the region. The only school in Suffolk which has consistently been in the top 200 schools in the Sunday Times parent power league tables. And this year, um, that meant when the exams were first cancelled, we had great confidence that even when the grades were due to be awarded based on historic averages uh, achieved by the school, we were confident, therefore, that we could have good results. And we, we hope that our, our pupils also had confidence that they were in a school which consistently achieved well in those public exams and could have confidence. Of course, uh, we knew we had some really strong cohorts and we knew that they were going to get good results, even if we'd been in the exam room. And you can see the results on the website. But remember also that those excellent results consistently year on year have been achieved with large groups, not just small cohorts, but really large cohorts hitting these high statistics. But those results aren't really important if they uh, don't get you anywhere. And I'm delighted with the uh, way that those exam grades are a passport to success. It's great to see our leavers, uh, lots of them going off just this weekend, off to university, and how prepared they feel they are for that experience. And in recent years, we've sent people off to Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Stanford, European universities, and all over the UK. We have a Vets and Medics programme, which is highly successful and, and clearly from, from our benchmarking, outperforming the average for independent schools. We have support for elite universities as well as the full range. And that also includes people who go on to uh, apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships and other uh, vocational uh, routes too. But when we achieve so well in those league tables, it's easy for people to point the finger at us and, and say that we are possibly a hothouse. Uh, that is something which we refute. And when you come to visit us, have a look around and, and, and see if it feels like one because you won't see that. We, we spend a lot of time celebrating the hard won B grade, uh, as well as those people who get the string of stars at the top there. Um, it's the battle for each individual within their own potential that's really important. And that's why we take great um, uh, care to look at our value added and those benchmarks. And it's really reassuring to know that we've been in the top 30% of independent schools for just value added per pupil. But as I said, academic excellence is just a small part of what we do. We have a similar ethos in our sport. We have sport for all, as well as elite player development. We've got four athletes, former pupils, who are due to go and play hockey for Great Britain in Tokyo, if that goes ahead next year. Um, and they are very uh, happy to come back and tell us um, just how well we're doing, particularly with our, our facilities, uh, the pink and blue Smurf turf, you may know, up at Rushmere. Um, but they also know that the programme we have now for sports, not just for hockey, is far in advance of what those Olympians had when they were here at the school. It's moved on significantly and replicated uh, across rugby, hockey, netball, cricket. Um, uh, we have just this year been shortlisted for the National Independent School of the Year Awards for our sporting provision. And I'm very proud of that shortlisting. It's just one example of our co-curricular programme. There's so much more drama, Lego Robotics, the Athenaeum, which is an academic discussion society, Model House of Commons, CCF cadets, uh, uh, music. And uh, talking of music and awards, um, it was great to see one of our former pupils last week uh, on the shortlist for the Mercury Music Prize. Um, uh, uh, but not a surprise because... Um, our music is a breathtaking standard, as any of you who will have heard about our annual concert at State Maltings will know. But maybe music isn't so much for you. Maybe your music will be confined to singing some hymns in the chapel or just being a consumer. There is plenty more to get into. For instance, in normal times, the whole of year eight will spend a week in Cumbria, a wonderful mix of team building, getting wet and educational uh, opportunities, geography, history, classics. It's been so successful. We've replicated that with year 12. They have a week away in North Devon, building on their life skills, interview skills, presenting oneself, car maintenance, student cooking, team building, that important life skill of surfing as well. And, and that leads into our program for the sixth form, a life skills program. They're called the EDGE, which is absolutely designed to give 
them the edge when they leave school. And we know that employers are crying out for school leavers, not just with those um, results in their A-level certificates, but also those soft skills, understanding of um, uh, mental health, their finances, the digital lifestyle, uh, travel, health and fitness, all of those things which we help them with. Uh, I'm really pleased that even in our reopening, we have kept our co-curriculum going as far as we can, even despite the re uh, restrictions. We've been socially distanced and bubble-based, but from music groups through, even we had a Duke of Edinburgh expedition camping out on our own sports field and all appropriately socially distanced. At times when other schools are shutting down their programme, we feel it's so important and it's been a delight that we've been able to keep that going. So we want you to come here and, and look at our whole provision and find the thing which works for you, find your passion. And then our promise to you is we will help you to take that as far as you can go in your potential. So have a look around at our website and videos today. And as I said, the next step is for you to come back for a personal visit. And then I hope you will come to Ipswich School because you value education. And our academic excellence is just one part of an education second to none. But finally, to finish off, I just want to share the most wonderful thing about my job. The wonderful thing about being headmaster of Ipswich School is to try to shape the school you wished your own had been. I love this school. I love talking about what we do here. That is my passion to care for and nurture the people uh, all of the young people who are here. It's such a privilege to be on that journey. I hope you feel that that's what you want for your sons and daughters, parents out there. I hope it's what you want for yourselves, the pupils out there. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. And I'm just going to bring in Laura now because we've had a lot of questions through um, on admissions processes and procedures. So. I will just, so hi Laura, so um, I think if you can just take us briefly through um, the admissions processes, we've had two specific questions that I think you'll answer in the process. One is about the entrance requirements at year seven, is it um, our own test or common entrance? Um, and one is specifically around the dates for year nine uh, 2021 entry. So I'll just put on the slide um, and Laura over to you. Thank you. So, yeah, from the slide, um, you can see, for, so answering a question about a year nine entrance tests. So um, they are Tuesday, the 2nd of March. And then if you're applying for an academic scholarship, then you come back as well on Wednesday, the 3rd of March. Um, but for both our year seven and our year nine um, tests, they are ones that, uh, that we write. They're not the common entrance tests. They're ones that our um, heads of departments will um, write for pupils to sit. Um, so um, the format of these uh, tests and um, assessments, they may have to change as this year goes on, but as soon as we've got um, your application form um, then we'll make sure that you're included in any mailings and important updates will be sent out to you so that you will know uh, where you have to be and when. Um, I think we've also got a number of international families joining, in, joining us today so I um, just want to say welcome to you too and um, do email us um, individually as the international process it's slightly different from these uh, from these published dates but um, you don't have to worry about jotting all these dates down this uh, slide will be on the admissions part of the website is that all right Saskia So Saskia, I think you're just muted. That's uh, so we haven't heard exactly what you said there. Sorry, sorry. I did say thank you, Laura, and Laura will be. Thank you. Sorry, um, Laura's going to be in the wings waiting. So if you do have any more admission questions, do do keep them coming through. Um, and we're now going to field the questions. My first one actually is for you, Anna. It's quite general. It says, "Who thrives best at Ipswich School?" Oh, okay. Um, so I see the children when they first join. 
And um, obviously, because I, I teach maths, I see them all the way up through the school to sixth form. I, I think it's a school for everyone. I mean, I can talk from personal experience as a parent. I have a daughter who I come to school and I watch singing in the choir in her big red dress in the chapel, singing like an angel. And then the next day she's coming home from a CCF camp covered in camouflage and mud, having spent the night lying under a tarpaulin. Um, and, and, and I see sort of everything in between. So I think it's a school for everybody. And I think what, one thing we do absolutely brilliantly is give those opportunities for people to be exactly who they want to be. Um, we had, um, I remember a, a prop forward who was in my house when I was head of school house, who was the prop forward in the rugby team and then started a poetry club at lunchtime. Um, we've had someone who, um, who, who started a butterfly club in year nine because that was his absolute passion was butterfly. So he started a butterfly club. And I think that's what's lovely. Right? You can be exactly who you want to be. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, do you want this one, Andrew? Um, which modern languages are studied? Absolutely. So I'm a Spanish teacher uh, and people can, when they start in year seven, can opt um, to take either French or Spanish. And then at the end of year eight, as pupils are looking ahead to year nine, um, they can um, opt to take either German or Russian in addition um, to those two Romance languages which they've studied for the last two years. And we also create an opportunity for Latin um, to sit alongside both of those languages. Or you can just do Latin with one of those languages as well in year nine. So we're a, a, a school that's big enough to have breadth for languages. Um, and it's a thriving, thriving department, very large department uh, with, with successes all the way through to, to A level in, in four languages, which against the national backdrop of languages is, is really, really impressive. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, this is a really interesting question. Um, and I think we'll throw this over to Mr. Weaver. Um, from an ethnicity perspective, how diverse are one, the school faculty, two, the school's pupils, and three, the curriculum? Really interesting question. Thank you. Yeah, so um, we, uh, we have a, a, a quite a diverse um, school, I would say. And we have people from all sorts of uh, ethnicities, including our international students. Uh, we have a, a small boarding uh, cohort, um, about 6% of our our pupils are boarders and some of those come from overseas um, and it's been really interesting when there has been um, uh, well lots in the media recently hasn't there uh, about um, the, the whole Black Lives Matter movement and, and so on and so forth and it's been an issue which all schools have had to be uh, thinking about um, it, it was it was interesting in lockdown um, one of my assemblies at, at around the time and I, I was talking about that um, quoted uh, a book written by um, one of our former pupils, uh, Adam, Dr. Adam Ruther Rutherford, who's a geneticist, um, and his book on um, uh, anti-racism was really important. It, it, it's fundamental to our school that we are an inclusive and diverse uh, school community. We have people from all backgrounds and all backgrounds can flourish. And it's also a school where I'm reassured, particularly from the alumni I know who've come from minority backgrounds, that their experience here ha has been uh, exactly that, where they felt they have been able to flourish. It has been a, a space where they have felt part of the school and, uh, and not disadvantaged or discriminated against in any way. And, and that is absolutely the school that, that we represent. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, really interesting question here again about someone who has a son who is a rugby player, but also very academic. How does that balance play out and who would like to take that? Shall I give that? Yes, I was hoping you would say that, Mr. Cliff. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Saskia. Uh, yes, uh, for the person who's asked a very, very relevant question, I would encourage you to watch the uh, sixth form information evening pre-video that will be launched as part of this Saturday's open event where our head boy, Charlie, probably in fact fits that profile very well. He is an elite uh, rugby player. He plays with Northampton Saints and throughout his senior school career, and that includes in lower school as well, we're very much aware of his uh, elite rugby and his commitments both inside and out outside of school, at club, at academy and at school level. The important thing with our structure of the timetable is that he has ample time to commit to his rugby as part of a normal school diet, 
without compromising academic time at all. We'll always be careful to protect and ring fence that academic time. We do use every minute of the day uh, very, very efficiently. So Charlie will talk about uh, morning gym sessions, 7.45 or 8 o'clock and bespoke training sessions with our uh, professionalised sports team that are working with him on all things like strength and conditioning and nutrition, working with his uh, academy. And every time the pastoral system is liaising with the sports faculty on his academic progress. Uh, and if ever we uh, sense that academic progress is being compromised by overcommitment with sport, then most importantly, the student is never caught in the middle of a tussle between the academic faculties and sport, either in school or outside. And that triangle that the headmaster talked about is a really, really good example of how we uh, reconcile um, that busy life of the academic rugby player. Uh, so I really would encourage you to A, watch that uh, video, but if you know anyone at the school already with that similar profile, uh, do talk to them about exactly how we balance uh, their commitment. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a specific one now for Mr. Weaver on, could you explain the school's bursary policy, please? Yes, so um, we, ha we provide support, which is up to 100% um, for students uh, and bursaries is means tested. So um, people would apply to the school for typically for one of our entry points. So either into year 12, into year nine or to year seven through those um, procedures and signal at that time that they are looking for bursary support. And, and when we make our assessment there, we will also ask for an account of the family's own finances. Um, of any property uh, that they may own, any income that's coming in, and we make an assessment of that. And then we allocate the funds which we have available. And as I've said, we are currently fundraising and increasing the amount of funds available. We, we, we're on a long-term project, I think, to, to do that over perhaps even 50 years. Um, we're going to keep um, raising the amount of funds available. We therefore have to... Um, uh, allocate those. We sometimes have to make some difficult decisions because there, there aren't always the amount of funds available for to match the people who require them. But on the basis of the need of the family, of the, them qualifying to um, enter the school, then we will try and support as many families as we can to access an Ipswich school education. And it's our aim to increase that as we go through. So it's on the basis of the regular entrance test procedure and a, uh, an account of the family's means. Uh, and sometimes that would also include a home visit as well. That's also potentially part of it. Great, thank you. Um, a really specific one here. Drama scholarships don't seem to be on offer for year nine at the moment. Do you envisage this changing in the future? Um, so we include drama specialists in our all-rounder scholarship. So rather than having a, a, a proliferation of, of types, uh, year nine, we know that there are some people who are able to contribute in, in quite special ways. Uh, and uh, rather than having a specific scholarship allocated to that, if someone is particularly talented in drama, then they should apply. Um, but but we can consider them for an all-rounder scholarship. And, and you know, we, we've had people, so just before lockdown, one of our former pupils was on stage with Sting uh, in, in touring the US in, in a uh, musical. We, we are a school which can produce some uh, uh, amazing um, drama um, exponents. Excellent, thank you. Um, and the same question came about boarding. When does boarding start? And have we got a new boarding house? Yeah, so um, boarding, um, typically the youngest we would have, it would be a year nine pupil. Um, occasionally we have had seven and eight if there's been a particular um, uh, reason why, uh, if they're a sibling or, or some other need. But really, we're most comfortable from year nine upwards. And so we have our existing boarding house, which is a, a house, uh, it's about 500 metres away from the main school called Westwood. And that's a, a, a beautiful house in its own grounds in, in the woods. Uh, it's got an astro pitch and, uh, and so on, and lots of um, great boarding accommodation and recreational facilities there. And then we have just opened, uh, as I said earlier, 
our brand new six form house. So that's on the former hospital site on Anglesey Heights. Um, and there we have uh, a number of six formers living in bespoke accommodation. And the idea there is for it to be a, a sort of a, a, um, a prototype experience for going off to university. So they have their own university style room, all en suite, shower and loo facilities for them. And it's an idea that not only our, our, our borders, our regular borders, but also our UK students who want to sort of get themselves ready can have perhaps a weekly boarding experience there. So that's in Anglesey Heights and, and that's been a huge success to open that this September. Excellent. So a full range of boarding options from, from full boarding through to weekly. Yeah, yeah. And, and some, some flexi boarding, although flexi is a bit more complicated in COVID because we obviously don't want to have um sort of sharing of the same room between different between people so we are asking people to 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 have a retainer so they reserve the room for them even if they're taking only a couple of nights uh, a, a each week but as you could understand yeah thank you very much um andrew i'm going to bring you on now to ask you um about gcse's do we offer mandarin and do we offer business at gcse level so uh, I'll take those in, in the order, Saskia, that you've asked those. Um, we do offer Mandarin. Um, we have um, a, a specialist, a native speaking Mandarin teacher who, who offers um, Mandarin. It's, it's largely off timetable, um, uh, it, it's important to say, um, but um, she, she's um, incredibly, um, in, inc incredibly strong and um, we've got a, 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 growing, a growing cluster, if you like, through activities um, taking up Mandarin. Um, we offer business studies at A level, but not at GCSE. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'm probably going to ask this question now to both um, Anna and Ben. It's about the mix of sports. Um, do girls play football? Do boys play netball? How? how what happens with sport um, and the girls and the boys? Do you want to start, Anna, and then I'll pass on to Ben? Yeah, sure. So. Um... Uh, focus sports are for girls, they are hockey, um, netball and cricket with some athletics and for the boys it's rugby, hockey and cricket. But along with that they do play all kinds of other sports and um, we've started a new amazing scheme actually this year where the year 7s and 8s get an extra afternoon of, of games every two weeks and they have a PE carousel. So I know that they've tried Pilates, they've tried um, Ultimate Frisbee, um, all kinds of really, really good fun things. With regard, to, yeah, with, with, so with the football, that that is a question and certainly a lot of the people's girls and boys come in going, I wanna play football. And it's just, we, we can't squeeze it into an already absolutely jam-packed um, games programme, but uh, girls and boys do play football pretty much every day on the field and at playtime. Um, and I know lots of them also have a uh, club in clubs outside school and they can fit that in as well. Uh, so there is not official football um, in the local school, certainly, um, and but they do always play. Um, there are football clubs further up the school, though, that I'm sure um, Andrew or Ben can tell you about. Great. Well, I'm going to bring Ben on now. Ben, would you be able to talk to us um, about how sport plays out in the sixth form, how, how students manage their A-levels and sport and the sports on offer for sixth form? Absolutely. Oh, and yeah. if uh, Ben Edmondson, the director of sport, were here, he'd be very proud to celebrate uh, what he's done with actually Ipswich School Sport uh, in his time here. He really has created a sports programme like I've never seen at uh, the three independent schools I've worked at. So for the sixth former, especially at their age, it's a multi-sport approach in the younger years, as is recommended. And the older they get through the years, they're encouraged to specialise in the sport that they enjoy the most. Now, I should say the focus sports are very traditional. It's a trio of rugby, hockey, cricket for boys and uh, netball, hockey and cricket for uh, the girls. But where there is uh, a passion and talent for a sport that we wouldn't call a focus sport, it could be equestrian, it could be swimming, uh, it could be athletics, then we will invest and support in any way that we can. And that might include making reasonable adjustments for them to be off site on a Tuesday afternoon or a Thursday afternoon so that they can follow that passion. That's very important to us and we would never be an obstacle to that. On the co-curriculum, uh, so that's lunchtime, after school clubs, even early morning athletics academy, strength and conditioning sessions. There's a wealth of things. And as Anna has said, we will always try and accommodate pupils' wishes. 
uh, and that uh, did include a couple of years ago a five-side girls football club because they wanted it, they petitioned for it, and time and staffing was made available for it. We can't talk about sport without talking about fives. Uh, it's a very, very popular, successful uh, niche sport that Ipswich School competes at at an unusually high level, in fact. And we've got, over the years, various bits of silverware uh, to prove our talents in fives playing, but also coaching. I've got to give credit to um, Messrs Stubbs and Bowton for their great work on fives. If you have a tour of the school, do have a look at the fives courts. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to bring Mr Weaver back. Um, Nick, we've got a question here about what is the top scholarship award? Um, and the second question on that, would the pupils in the prep school have advantages with the scholarship award? So um, our top uh, award that we would give would be 50%. That is the maximum that we would give on the, an ability uh, level scholarship, although it can be combined with means tested assistance. So um, somebody could be both in receipt of a scholarship and means tested top up as well. Um, and the 50 percent, um, it, it would be for our, the, those people who are exceptionally talented, who are going to be the absolute leaders. Um, it's really important to say that it, we don't just want to recognize talent and achievement in a scholarship. We're also looking for people who are going to be leaders and are going to make a contribution. So, our scholarship assessment for uh, example, for um, those people joining into year seven, uh, we select a cohort to come back from our entrance test, and that cohort then does lessons in school. And in those lessons, we assess how well they contribute to lessons, not just how well they learn and they can internalise the material that has been has been taught. Um, are the prep at an advantage? Um, it's a level playing field in terms of our assessment criteria. So there's never uh, never a, a favour given to um, anybody because they're at the prep or because they're at the Ipswich School. But we always say that the best preparation for the next stage at Ipswich School is the preceding one. So in one sense, um, we think we, we rate very highly the education that is given at our prep school. So that perhaps gives an advantage. But just in terms of when we're looking at a spreadsheet and a list of names, it, it's absolutely done on merit on the basis of the assessment at the time with no favour given to any particular school. Thank you very much. Um, if I can keep you here, I've got a question on which, uh, are there any facilities that are due to be updated? And what are the short to long term plans for developing the school facilities? Yeah, so, well, we, we, we keep a rolling program of continuous improvement uh, at the moment, and you can just see how that has manifested itself in recent years. So that state-of-the-art music block that we have, uh, our swimming pool, which happens to be the oldest covered swimming pool in any school in the country, um, has just recently been refurbished. Um, uh, uh, and so that's something that we've done. Um, we, we've spent some um, considerable money on um, getting our new Anglesey Heights uh, up and running. Uh, uh, I think at the moment we are then we're just having a pause. And as I said, there's some careful planning and thought going into um, what might be next on the Anglesey Heights site. Um, but while we do that, we, we continue to do our rolling program of upgrading our facilities on uh, on this site, but also up at, at Rushmere. We, we, we're keeping an eye on uh, the Rushmere Sports Centre there and, and so on and so forth. So it, it's it's just making sure that everything keeps at a standard. And that typifies the approach we have as a school. We want to look at what's the best thing that we do and say, OK, so what can everything else learn from that? And let's bring everything else up so we're everything is operating within a width band. And that includes our facilities. And so, so rather than telling you that there's you know this building's going to be next or whatever uh, that principle really is is the thing that that i think prospective parents and people should understand is is what we're about thank you very much um i'm going to bring laura in in a minute because we've had a lot of questions about dates and scholarships but in the meantime i've got a lovely question here we're coming from hong kong english is not our mother tongue is there any extra english support for our son who's going to apply for year nine january start and yeah Sorry, I've got one more bit on that. Sorry, is there a buddy system? So um, we have a, a teacher who provides specific and, and targeted English as a 
additional language support. Uh, and that's typically delivered to our boarders in the boarding house uh, and they, they're well supported. But those um, people who have English as an additional language may also have some time in learning support during their weekly timetable. So they will go up to our wonderful learning support departments and they will have particular support accessing um, the curriculum subjects with perhaps specific vocabulary or um, just to helping support them with a, a particular piece of work uh, and so on. And um, yeah, it's, it's just wonderful to see those people who, who join us perhaps uh, feeling a little bit less confident. I mean, the, the, they need to demonstrate a, a certain facility in order to be accepted to the school. But uh, just when we've seen those people progress through and see that growing confidence from year nine through to year 13 um, in, in their English, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to, to plot that journey through. Great. And I'm just going to bring Andrew in here because it's a, there's a lot about um, starting in year nine. Um, it, it feels to me that year nine students get readily welcomed. You don't have to join from year seven. Can you talk to me a bit about that? Absolutely. So every year, Saskia, we have around 20 who join us um, into, into year nine. Um, this year, that number has, has risen to the highest um, we've had in, in recent years of, of 30. And the, the important job that I have is to make sure that pupils who join us from other schools into year nine that they start um, year nine on a completely level playing field with pupils that have been with us um, through year seven and year eight and then starting year nine at the same time as them, Saskia. So um, our lower school pupils go through their subjects by form um, with the exception of maths. Uh, and then so as pupils join middle school, uh, the former year eights and pupils who are new to the school, I allocate them to one of six houses in the school. So all those social groups that have been flourishing and thriving um, sort of all the cards are thrown up in the air again and it's a fresh start really uh, from, from within year nine. And so that's on the pastoral side. Um, and I think there was a question about buddies as well. You mentioned Saskia as well. So pupils who start with us who are, who are new to Ipswich School, they are buddied up uh, with a pupil who, who knows Ipswich School incredibly well, having been here for the last two years. And really the buddy's job is to be the, the eyes and ears uh, for our new pupils to, to uh, make sure that they know what they're packing for the next day that they've understood the timetable, that they know where all the different parts of the school are um, and to welcome them through lunch, all of those things. So they've got to, certainly got um, an important job. Uh, and the, the, the experience that we've had is that so many pupils who join us uh, from year nine are, are used to throwing themselves into school life um, and, and they're very quickly flying up and running um, and having a happy, happy and engaging time in year nine. And it's important at this point as well, so not only on the pastoral side um, is, is, is Year 9 a level playing field, but the, the Year 9 curriculum um, has two big curriculum groups, uh, and that's worth just giving a, couple, a, a, a brief answer to, if I may. As I mentioned, that uh, our maths in the lower school is set um, on ability, and that um, is also the case as pupils go through, through Year 9, and our sciences uh, design and art as well. Our sciences are, are all shaped by the maths allocation. Matthew Kaur allocates all of our pupils to, um, to maths classes and science follow those subjects. But I allocate pupils on the other side of the curriculum and that is uh, largely down to their language choice. We've got, as I mentioned earlier in this, um, in this forum, that we've got quite a complex um, arrangement for languages in year nine um, and English and humanities follow those language groups. And so it's a really fresh start, not just pastorally, but also academically as well. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Nick, I'm going to bring you back. I've got two questions, so I'll need you to be brief on both. Um, yeah. One is about uh, music scholarships. Uh, yeah. What are the requirements to be considered? And then I'm going to, as soon as you've done that, I'm going to bring you back into sport and hockey. So music first, please. Great. So music, I mean, it depends on, on, on your level going through. So I think we... we we typically say uh, you've got to be around about uh, grade four or five. Um, mostly music scholars would have more than one specialism. So it could be two instruments or instrument of voice. Um, but the, the simple answer is be in touch via our admissions office because our, our music department are very good, at, again, at that individualised um, advice. And so via admissions, our music department will be able to to um, uh, engage in that dialogue and tell you if you're at the right sort of level. 
Great, thank you very much. Now, I've got a question here about sport. Um, is it possible, would it be possible to allow a choice of sport in turn two? Um, and further to that, because hockey's not for everyone, um, and putting more student choice into there, would, would, that, be, would that be a good idea? So, yeah, um, the, the whole point of the programme is that actually we, we, we keep that multi-sport approach early on, so people do go through uh, and uh, the different sports, but as they... Uh, go up through the school, then there is the opportunity to focus on uh, your one sport as you specialise. So uh, it, it's quite early on that you could say uh, uh, if you were a netball player but didn't like your hockey, that you might be able to do two terms of netball um, in, in year nine or, or similarly with rugby. And with rugby, we always have an opportunity for a non-contact version so people who are doing rugby nobody's compelled to the contact version of the game even though rugby might be the only option when you're uh, um, starting out in the school that's brilliant great so uh, so in answer to that question yes, it's absolutely possible to choose rugby for two terms thank you for that question um, I'm going to bring Anna on now I've got a question here um, about size of classes in year seven how and also how many students join in year seven yeah, okay, so the numbers have um, increased this year. We've got, I think, 105 started in year seven this year. So we do five forms, and um, they're sort of round about this year, round about sort of 22 in each, 21, 22 in each. And they're made up of sort of half pupils from our prep school and a half pupils that come from other schools. So um, it's, a, it's a really nice mix. Uh, we have pupils coming from all kinds of different schools. I think there's about 40 different primary schools that they came from this year and a, a complete mixture of state schools and, and independent schools. And also um, lots of pupils are the sort of their one coming from their school. So we do an awful lot of work. I do an awful lot of work and, and the school does an awful lot of work of making sure they fit in and feel really comfortable. I go out and visit every single one of the new pupils. Obviously, I get to know the prep pupils because they're over the road, but the pupils going from different schools, I go and visit their schools or I do a home visit, get to know them, all kinds, um, all kinds of inductions and introductory afternoon and ways of making them feel comfortable when they join. Um, and what's lovely, I think, about those schools is that they stay in that form group for the two years. So I think it's really daunting for some pupils coming from little tiny primary schools into a big school where we have a hundred in a year group. But they, I, I make sure they only, they only have to really concentrate on getting to know those 20 people in their, in their own form group and their tutor who stays with them for two years. So they really get to know each other well. And feel Thank really you. You were also quite imaginative, weren't you, about uh, remote induction <laughs> this year. So. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, obviously I couldn't get into primary schools or people's homes during lockdown, so I did um, Google Meets, which was amazing, really good fun actually. So I did about, I think, 60 Google Meets with um, primary school pupils and their families, and I met their pets and siblings, and um, it was good fun, and they got to see me so that when they came into school, um, all the sort of little worrying worries and questions they had, I'd answered them, and they, they could see my face. Uh, we had form group meetings as well, so we got the whole form groups in Google Meets before they started. Thank you very much. Um, I'm bringing Laura on now because I've got a very specific question, um, and I'm sorry I haven't got to it before because they, they did ask it quite a while back. Um, I have a daughter in year four. When should they apply for year seven? Um, it's never too early to apply. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you've made up your mind, then this is good news. So, yeah, you can fill in the application form and we will look after that for you. And then it's usually um, kind of the September before um, entry that we would start to update you about tests and dates and things like that. Um, but, yeah, if you've decided, then please send that in um, now. That'd be great. Thank you very much. And then just one more for you, Laura. Um, for scholarship applications for year nine, when do you want them to come in? Um, so music, we ask for that to be in um, by Wednesday, the 16th of December. Um, the art ones are Friday the 8th of January, same as sport. And then all round applications, um, we just say by the middle of February. Okay, don't go away. Um, can people see examples of past papers for year nine and year seven? Uh, yes, yeah, if uh, we've had your application form, then usually um, for year seven, we'll be looking to send out some papers in the next month or so. And then for year nine, we'll send those out um, just after Christmas. So they will so, give parents an idea of what, what to expect 
pupils yeah. can practice on them. Brilliant. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. Um, right. Well, I think that's all of our very specific. I'm just having a check, everyone, just to check that we've covered everything. Um, can I just say about the entrance exams, Saskia? I think, can I just say something about the entrance exams? Please do. Okay. Um, I just think they, they're sometimes really, really, people think of them as being really scary, and I just don't think they are. I know for the year seven entrance exams, um, they do have really good fun and it's a really good day. And I think if they, you know, their enthusiasm and we do is, is sort of like really palpable in the room. And um, I think one of, didn't one pupil, um, Nick, say to you, it's like the best day ever after the entrance exam. So they are fun. <coughs> They're not too awful. Um, and I really don't think they are terribly, terribly hard. We're looking for potential as well as people who are brilliant at yeah. the yeah, so uh, absolutely. We're not looking for a special polish. We're looking for someone who's doing well in year six. I think that's really important. And we do want to make that exam test day a really good day. So however nervous anyone is when they come, we hope that by the time they leave us, they've got a smile on their face. And, and indeed, one person did say this has been the best day ever. I think that was to do with the tuck shop visit, which we, we threw in, in the middle of it. But um, uh, we, we absolutely try and make it a positive experience. We don't want anyone to feel that they're going through the sort of mill or anything like that. And it should be very positive. Excellent. Um, so just to say that, uh, sorry, I'm going to put myself into the big screen. We do need to wrap up now. Um, if we haven't got your questions, please, uh, we will go through these and, and get back to you through admissions and equally just email admissions um, and we will do our best to answer any that we didn't um, cover. So admissions at ipswich.school. Um, and I'm gonna hand over to Nick now just to wrap up and a reminder that if, you, if you're interested in our prep school, we're about to start the live webinar at 10.30. Well, thank you. I'd just like to, to express my thanks to my colleagues here on the, on the um, webinar. Uh, and I hope that what we've been able to communicate to you is just a, a little bit of a flavour of the care that we did about induction, about helping people to, to, to come on board and be part of this uh, great school. It would be a, a delight to show you in person, um, uh, according to the prevailing restrictions that are in force, um, we can organise that. So please do be in touch about that. Um, and we'd love to see you all. Thank you, everybody who's tuned in. Thank you very much. And goodbye and do join us at the PrEP webinar if you can.